Hi, it's John Deal again with the first vidcast for November 2010. I uh, get down to the first of the seven finds today. It's looking at Kosh. And for those of you who can't remember what Kosh is, it's Control of Substances Hazardous to Health um, Regulations. Um, it's an article that I came across. I'll go straight to the article itself. The um, address will be at the top of the screen. Um, this is about Kosh in schools and colleges, but it applies to all learning providers. It's an interesting article about schools and colleges being required to be Kosh compliant. It talks about conducting Kosh risk assessments, and also it is important that Kosh regulations are not just for craft workshops and science labs, but to every single area within a learning provider. There is a, a, an information pack that can be downloaded and there is also a video that can be watched and a compliance pack that can be downloaded as well. It's well worth having a look at to make sure that you are meeting the requirements of the law. The second find is Math Open Reference. It's all about geometry and ideal for uh, maths um, practitioners and um, learners. It's uh, open reference, free online reference, as I say, for geometry practitioners and learners. And it provides interactive resources. Let's just go onto the website. You'll notice that there's plane geometry, solid geometry, coordinate geometry, index, and there's also some tools that will allow um, users to look at linear functions, quadratic functions, cubic functions, etc. as well as a maths and scientific calculator. Um, I went on to, here we go, I went in just to show you an example into supplementary angles and the nice thing about this, and it is JavaScript so you will need that on your machines, but you know, how much better is this to actually see the angles, 57 degrees and 123 degrees, to get over the idea that supplementary angles add up to 180 degrees. There's a definition, there's this interactive resource that I've just demonstrated while I was talking. Okay, and there is, if I just scroll down the screen a bit, hang on, doesn't want to, here we go. Um... It shows you the ways that learners can helpfully remember and there are related links to other angles as well. It's a very useful resource and ideal for use on an interactive whiteboard. Number three, it's uh, another strip cartoon um, tool. It's called Strip Generator. It's a free online tool for creating black and white comic strips. I have produced one and included it in the resources for the last workshop that we did. If we go on to the site, you'll see um, again the address at the top of the page. It basically allows users to, to produce cartoons, um, strip cartoons of their own uh, making. Let me just come out of there and I'll tell you the different things that you can do. For example, you can select the number of frames that's required. You can drag characters and or objects into the frames. The menus for the characters themselves and objects are fairly extensive. And once selected, you can adjust the size of them, uh, the characters or the objects, uh, to fit whatever scene you decide that you want. You can add text, it's simpler case of adding a speech bubble, double clicking and typing the text and of course resizing etc. And when it's complete it can be saved online, it can be printed or embedded into any HTML publication. So that includes your websites, blogs, wikis, VLEs etc. It's a handy tool for practitioners and I'm sure learners as well. Fourth find is from Hefke. It's look. It's a report which uh, Hefke commissioned from the National Union of Students. I think one of the interesting things about the report is section 184, where it says lectures and staff of widely varying levels of ICT competence 
one common area of concern for both those who took part in the survey and the discussion was of varying levels of competence on the part of lecturers and staff. While some are clearly skilled or able to function in an IT setting, others lack even the rudimentary skills. This uh, obviously has major implications for learning experiences as more students arrive at the post-secondary levels with modern requirements and sensibilities. There is a, a summary of this report on the address that's at the top of the screen, but you can download the report as an Adobe PDF or Microsoft Word from this particular website. And it's called Students' Perspective on Technology, Demand, Perceptions and Training Needs. Okay, Googlios. Why do we have Web2 and silly names? Um, I feel this probably fits in more with HE and for those who are looking for personal development sorry personal development and planning portfolios it's basically where google tools meet e portfolios there is a nice video clip on the on the website i'm not going to play it for you now you can go and have a look at it yourselves um, but it may well be an ideal place for you to go to uh, set up a personal learning environment. Let's just pop to the address. Here it is. This is Googlios. And as you can see here, it's talking about what it is, uh, giving you some examples, how to get started, some quotes and notes, communities of practice, suggested readings, and so on. Um, I think it has got quite a lot of potential, as I say, for those in HE or for those who actually want um, personal development or planning um, portfolio, I think that will probably uh, be the one that you want. Penultimate, fine. Number six out of seven. PDF protects. PDFs are one of the most popular documents, as I'm sure you're all aware, and it's one that ought to be used. There are still many learning providers putting Word documents and Excel spreadsheets up online, which for many learners and for some practitioners are just not accessible. They don't have Microsoft on their machines for a start. But having said that, they may well want, the practitioners or users uh, of PDFs, they may well want to password protect them. So only the people they want to access it can. Well, PDF Protect will allow you to do that. Um, you can upload a PDF document, you specify the password, um, and... Uh, you're asked to retype it to make sure that you've typed it in correctly and then you can specify the high or low encryption. You ought to note that the low strength um, won't make it that secure to be honest and it will allow it to be read on older readers but the high strength will increase the security and make your documents incompatible with the older readers and it's the same old story make sure you know what you want it for pdf protect is here this is the website it's fairly straightforward at the top of the page you browse for the file you type in the password in those two you choose the high i would suggest for most of you and you click protect and it will give you a download of the protected pdf that you've actually been using okay it's as easy as that I've had a play and it works very well. And finally, for those of you who just do not remember important dates, this is Alertful. It's completely free and it reminds users, or if you put in somebody else's address, it will remind them by email. doesn't require any registration. Let's just go to the website. There you go. Uh, if you click on Get Started, okay, what can it remind you about? Um, you can choose any of those. Uh, if it's a birthday, you'll get a, a template, if you like, an MOT. Again, a template. Actually, I ought to do one for mine. Um, custom, anything else, this is what you use. You type in what you want reminding about. You put in the date. You choose it from a calendar. Let's just come out of there. You type in your email. And you can choose whether it's a one-off, whether you want to be reminded every day, every week, each month or once a year. Put in a message that you want to be included in the reminder. The verification is obviously this underneath, in this case N5Z7P5. 
you type that in and click submit. Now if um, you put in somebody else's email there it'll be a reminder to them so you could remind your learners that you're coming to do an assessment or whatever. Right that's the uh, final find for today I hope you enjoyed that uh, look forward to meeting you with the next vidcast.